In this Rainmakers Extra segment, remember the 21-year-old Eagle Scout who became dependent on opioids from dental treatment? As scary as that sound, every parent out there is wondering, what can I do to save my child, even if that child is 25 years old? Though I hope no one ever has to ask for this advice, but if a parent finds themselves with a son or daughter with a prescription opioid dependency, what would you tell them? First, evaluation and determine that the person does have um, opioid use disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have a, what we call a shared uh, decision-making discussion with the patient and, the pa in this case, the patient's parents and family. Uh, first, to tell them that we think medications are essential to the treatment. And then we would discuss the three different medication options, uh, which is a little complex, and we can get into that if you want to. So the one that's been around the longest um, is methadone. Methadone can only be provided by a licensed treatment program. Methadone is also what we call a full agonist opioid, meaning that when it goes to the opioid receptor, it fully activates that receptor. And so that's, uh, uh, that's the same thing that all these other opioids, both the prescriptions and heroin that we've been talking about, they also do that. So th there is the potential for an overdose with methadone. So to get methadone, you have to go to a, a clinic every day and take that medication under observation. And the medication uh, is very carefully titrated by the medical staff at that clinic to make sure you're getting the right amount and not too much. And the dose has to be adjusted over time. So that, so uh, methadone is a really excellent medication, but it does come with the potential burden of having to uh, attend a clinic every day. Now, when uh, people uh, have been at the clinic for a considerable period of time, one or two years, and the patients are stable, not using other drugs, and, and things are going well in their life, they can get take-home doses. So ultimately, when they remain in treatment, they don't have to come every day. And uh, methadone has some uh, very important qualities. One, it's a very long-acting medication. So taking it once a day is enough to keep the patient from having any withdrawal symptoms for 24 hours. That's why they can come into the clinic, they can get it, that one observed dose, and they're going to be fine for the rest of the 24 hours. It also has some characteristics of antidepressant medication, and so it tends to be um, very good for people's mood as well. Um, th then we have um, naltrexone. Naltrexone is the antagonist that I talked about, um, and that's been available for a little more than 30 years. Uh, comes in two forms. There's an oral form, but there's also a long-acting injection that uh, after one injection, the medication stays in someone's system for about 30 days. So that medication is good if you don't want to be on something that's going to cause the, f the physiologic effects of opioids, where you would have withdrawal afterwards. However, to get on it, you have to be completely withdrawn from the opioids. That means taking no opioids for seven to 10 days and going through that withdrawal experience. And not everyone is able to do that. Some people are. Once you get on that naltrexone, any uh, physician can prescribe it. And we recommend the injection typically for people because then we don't have to worry about whether the person's going to take it every day. And then you're protected from opioids. If you use opioids, you won't feel them. If you use them repeatedly, you can't get that physiologic tolerance that we talked about. Uh, and you can then go on with your life. And because you know that you can't use them, you stop thinking about them, and the, the, the craving tends to go away. And the injection lasts a month. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, and so the, the, the big advantages there are no physiologic tolerance and withdrawal, uh, and the barrier is you have to be able to go through that withdrawal, which is very, very uncomfortable for a lot of patients and difficult. Now, we have uh, uh, medical interventions we can do to make that withdrawal less severe, but we don't have anything that's perfect, so people are still going to have some withdrawal symptoms. Then the third medication, which um, has been available for the last 15 years, is buprenorphine. And buprenorphine kind of fits in between those two. It's what we call a partial agonist. So it does go to the opioid receptor, and it activates the receptor, and it gives the person a feeling of having opioids in the system. But because it's a partial agonist, it doesn't fully activate the receptor it has what we call a, ce a ceiling effect. So if you 
If you're on methadone and you take more and more and more methadone, you eventually can get enough methadone in your system that you would overdose on it. With buprenorphine, if you take more and more and more, initially you get some effect and then that just plateaus. And you could take, you could take a month's supply and if you're an adult, you still wouldn't overdose. So they, the advantage there is we can have someone come to a physician's office, we can write a prescription, the patient could take it to the pharmacy, they could get a 30-day supply of medication, and we don't have to worry that oh, I might be giving that person something they could overdose on. If we were writing a prescription for the opioids that are used for pain that we've already mentioned, like oxycodone or hydrocodone or morphine, and we give this person a month's supply and they decide to take it all in one day, like we heard about the 21-year-old patient, that could be a lethal overdose. With buprenorphine, we don't have to worry about that. Mm. So um, that can be a very good medication for people uh, to get started on in a doctor's office. They don't have to go to a clinic every day. And we've had a lot of tremendous success using that. How long does this take? To, to help people become so non-dependent upon uh, opiates that they are back to themselves. Uh, that varies from person to person. So we've seen uh, dramatic changes even within a month with buprenorphine or methadone treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes the more subtle changes take more time. But, uh, and then we've seen people that might take two or three years to stabilize. So it, it's just going to be an individual sort of situation. The, let me enhance that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> that when I explain this to patients, I say we have three different medicines. This is the opiate receptor. We have a full opiate stabilizer called methadone. We have a partial called buprenorphine that it kind of attaches sideways, but so tightly that other opiates can't attach there. And then we have a full blocker that sits like that. And then we talk about some of the details like Andy was referring to. Um, the second thing is how long does it take to stabilize a person? As I was saying, as you become opiate dependent, and especially over time, it sort of becomes, it's steering the ship. You're not. Your brain, your morality, your norms of your life are no longer steering what you do in life. And that's why many people who are opiate dependent start lying to their family, start lying to their boss, start lying to whoever uh, start trying, you know, and they end up uh, lying to doctors and then they have start stealing or they doing other things to try to get enough opiate to feed that receptor hunger that is just so dramatic it's driving. Now you can see if somebody's like that, the longer they are like that, the more it starts replacing the healthy parts of their personality. And so once you stabilize the opiate receptor system, it takes a while for all those dysfunctional kinds of behaviors. When, when you're used to about three quarters of what comes out of your mouth is, is a lie, distortion, or some way to sort of keep me in opiates and you away from me, uh, it takes a long time for that to normalize. Some people who've had shorter versions of opiate dependence and maybe had an easier time of it getting their opiates, maybe and I call it like the metastasis. It's, it's like opiate addiction and metastasis into your brain, into your soul. Uh, that varies by degree. And the degree of recovery and how long it takes sort of depends on how badly that's damaged in the first place. 